At the northern end of the Royal Borough of Kensington and Chelsea in London lies an area known as Notting Hill Gate. Over the last 10 years, this area has received an enormous influx of people, particularly young single people, from all over Britain and also immigrants from all over the world. Notting Hill Gate is a cultural and racial melting pot and is probably the world's most integrated ghetto. Notting Hill has an undeniable attraction to some who live there, notably the young. For others, though, things are not so enjoyable. The housing conditions are appalling and some families have been on the waiting list for 19 years. The young have their own problems, not the least of which is the legal one. A little way from the centre of Notting Hill, next to the offices of the underground magazine Oz, is an organisation known as Release. Release is a free legal aid service that was started two years ago as a result of the ever-increasing number of drug arrests. There are organisations analogous to Release in most of the major cities in the West. Since its inception in 1967, Release has handled over 1,500 cases, largely for possession of cannabis, but they do not handle drug cases exclusively and in fact will provide legal aid for anyone who needs it. They have two floors of a small house. The top floor is the main office and library, and on the first floor is a waiting room where we asked Caroline Kuhn, one of the two organisers, a few questions. Well, Caroline, uh, when did you start Release and why? Well, I think that um, it wasn't necessarily me that started Release. I think it was very definitely the efforts of the underground as a whole. If you remember that dramatic summer in 67 when Mick got busted, and the Beatles put over their song All You Need Is Love, and the harassment really reached Nazi proportions. Um, Michael English, Joe Boyd, Jim Haynes, Bill Levy, we all got together, and Steve Abrams with some meeting and said what we could do positive rather than putting it around the streets outside the news of the world to contract the rather repressive situation, to put it politely. Mm -hmm. um, and um, we decided that there was nothing one could do to stop young people being arrested, and that we weren't going to cut our hair just because the fuzz were, uh, were treating us like um, shit. Uh, excuse the pun. <laughs> and um, we decided that we had to educate ourselves what best to do in the situation, which was um, explaining what the civil rights were. and. Um, we needed a 24-hour telephone service because the fires were busting us mainly at night, dragging us out of bed in the sort of early hours in the morning, which was very frightening for one thing. And even if you did know your civil rights at that point, one was really powerless to do anything about it. And how many, I mean, how many cases would you do you get a day? How many cases have you had altogether? Mm, um, well, we sometimes have as many as four pe 14 people in a day. Mm -hmm. And um, we're dealing on average with 70 cases in court a month. The interface between police and public in Notting Hill is complex. One thing there is fairly clear. Relations are not always harmonious. As always, second-class citizens do not have as many rights as first-class ones, and to live in some parts of Notting Hill is to acquire a second-class status instantly, without any reference to age or colour or dress. The situation was not improved by the recent legislation giving the police open powers of stop and search. There has been no racial violence in Notting Hill since the race riots in the late 50s. But recently, after an incident in which a speeding police car crashed, killing a young Jamaican, the area has become a little tense. seem to keep the area under constant surveillance of the kind one usually associates with Soho. But Notting Hill is not a Soho. It is primarily a residential district, and some people anyway resent the continuous patrols, the paddy wagons moving along at 10 miles an hour. And 
facts on the to come from it. I didn't know that. Ask me all the way. Ask you for what? Come, sir. The men on the wall, as she said, the girl felt disgusting. One result of the shocking housing conditions that exist in the rotten end of the Royal Borough is the lack of ordinary amenities for the children of the area. Most of the kids are out all day on the streets by the age of five, and it is not uncommon to see children even younger out on the main roads. The alternative has been a childhood spent indoors. Built on the rubble of what would be gardens in respectable Kensington, this playground is largely paid for by local residents, people who can ill afford it. Westminster Council contributes £250 per year, and the Borough Youth Committee another 50 But the playground costs over £1,000 to run, and the residents make up the £700 difference. So successful is Shantytown from an educational standpoint that infant schools send classes there during term time as a sort of environmental classroom. Adults are free to come in and teach the children, and one young American, Nick Shumatov, holds art classes which are popular with all the children. You have to realize that the further away you are from an object, the easier it is to see. And the closer you look, the more complicated it becomes. So look at this earth as a grain of sand on the beach of infinity. Now, think of that grain as a speck of dust in the sands of time on the beach of infinity. Now, look at you. You're really so small, in fact, I can hardly see you at all on your grain of sand. No, your speck of dust in the sands of time on the beach of infinity. You're just a dot or a spot or a blot on a part of a little of a bit that's a lot of a little of what might almost be called the whole of it all. You insignificant nothing. Relatively speaking, you only exist to you. Not to me. That's probably why you call me God. But I answer to somebody too. I wonder, could it be you? There are a tremendous amount of people in this area who have a terrific amount of potential. Larry Smart is an artist. He's lived in Notting Hill Gate for over two years. He's married and has a child. 
He went to art school for one year, but in his own words, spent the next three years trying to forget what they told him. He lives in a house that used to belong to a Mr. Rackman, and it's like many others in the area, dingy, stinking, and rotten. Yet in his flat, he's created a little island, and in the midst of decay, manages to live comfortably. It takes him about a month to paint a picture. <laughs> oh, really? <There> he is. <laughs> Happy birthday, sweet sixteen. Da da da. Saints Church is visible all over Notting Hill. Attached to this church is a small hall. 
It was here that London's first underground dances were held, leading eventually to the giant gatherings at the Roundhouse and Dufour. Now the wheel has come full circle, and it is here that quintessence, a local group, practice and play. <laughs>
gonna sell 